So to start this procedure, we're going to use the uh, hubcap tool, um, removal tool here. This came with the original tire equipment. If you don't have it, you're gonna need something like this so that you can uh, pop this off like a screwdriver or whatever have you. Now we're gonna loosen the lug nuts. If you have an impact like I'm gonna use, you could actually just jack the vehicle up and then you can uh, knock them loose with an impact. But if you're using a breaker bar or uh, anything like that um, to do it by hand, you're gonna need to do it with the uh, weight of the vehicle um, on the tire, uh, then you can jack it up. So uh, we're gonna break it loose slightly on the ground with the impact just to show you the correct procedure and then we'll jack the vehicle up and proceed from there. Okay, so now we'll break the lug nuts loose. Like I said, if you're using a breaker bar, you're gonna have to do it with the weight of the vehicle on. If you're using an impact like this, you can do it once the vehicle is up in the air, but I'm just gonna show you the correct procedure here. Okay, so I've now jacked the vehicle up. The uh, suspension on this has like a scissor arm type of a deal going on. So we're just uh, literally lifting it up with the jack off the scissor arm, and then we're gonna slide our jack stand in under here. Then just slowly lower the jack down onto the jack stand. And we're gonna support the vehicle on the jack stand, but I always leave the jack um, slightly against the surface as well, so you have two supporting members. Okay, so now that we have our vehicle fully in the air, we can remove the remainder of our lug nuts and pull off our wheel. So next up, we have to remove this bolt and this bolt. This will remove the caliper and then we will hang the caliper from a bungee. So now we're just gonna take a bungee cord and we're gonna remove the caliper and support it up here. The screwdriver can help uh, pry the uh, caliper off as well. So now we just need to unhook our uh, brake line from the sensor here. So we can get free motion of the caliper. And I'm going to take my bungee cord and stick it right through the caliper here. Stick it through a second time. And now we're just going to support it from above off of the, uh, the spring tower here. Now we will remove the brake shoes. They simply slide right on out. And you can even see these brake pads have quite a bit of life left on them, but we're gonna replace them anyways. So next up we need to remove the uh, grease cap. And if it doesn't pop off with just kind of tapping on it around here, may need to use a screwdriver to uh, take it off, but it's coming off. Yeah. See what you guys look like. So, sticks in you know, about a good quarter of an inch in there. So we now have a cotter pin that's in here that we need to bend straight, and then we can pull it out. And actually, we're gonna wipe some of this grease off because you can't even like see what's going on in here. Okay, so now we have our cotter pin straightened out. We can yank this thing out. There we go. So now we take off our little uh, cotter pin. It's like a castle nut type of deal. It goes over our actual uh, nut that's there. So now we'll back our nut and uh, our bearing washer off here. screwdriver in here to pop off that and you can see the rotor moves forward so now it's completely free 
All right, now that we uh, have all this free here, the rotor can come off. And actually there's our bearing. So let's get that back up there. And let's pull this out so we don't damage it in any way. Set it down. I'm gonna keep debris out of that too. I got a metal tray below me here that I'm using to keep everything on. You can see what our other bearing looks like on the back side there. So you can see we have grease all over everything. Um, bearing rides here and bearing rides back here. So I apologize for this portion. I couldn't uh, get the right camera angle to do it, but uh, basically you stick your screwdriver down in here up against the back side of the bearing and just take a hammer and tap in a circular pattern around until it uh, pops out. So now that I have the bearing knocked out, that's what will end up coming out the back side there. You can see now we have uh, it open. So I am gonna clean back here so that we know our uh, rotor has a good uh, flush mount with the uh, the hub here, or the knuckle, I mean. So just using a brass brush. So let's take a rag here, make sure we got everything pretty darn clean. We just want all this stuff clean so that when we put our new grease in here, we don't have any dirt or contaminants or anything like that in there. Okay, so now we got our bearings out. Um, we're gonna inspect them, make sure that our rollers look okay and that there's uh, nothing damaged or broken about them. So these look like we can reuse this one, which is the uh, front one. And then, uh, like I said, this is how it came out the back side. So beveled in inwards. And then you got your seal here. So again, we just want to inspect the same type of a thing. Everything seems reasonable, so we'll just repack this one. But we're going to clean all the old grease out of them, actually, and uh, then uh, go from there. So I'm just going to use uh, brake clean here to uh, spray out the bearings. Okay, so now I have the bearings uh, all cleaned out. You can see there's really minimal grease uh, from the original left in there. So now we're gonna pack these things. Using high temp um, disc brake wheel bearing grease, um, also known as front wheel bearing grease. Okay, so we have our rear wheel bearing all clean. Now we're going to take our uh, wheel bearing grease and we're gonna pack this bearing here. It's obviously gonna get a little bit messy. You just want to smear this all into the actual bearing itself. So you're, you're going to have to get dirty to do it. So. Okay, so now we have a heavy amount of grease on this thing. We're going to slide it right on in. take our uh, wheel bearing seal just gonna get it kind of lubed up so that everything just wants to slide into place basically and it's also a rubber seal on the inside here so just keep everything nice and lubricated so nothing wants to hang up on anything all right now we're gonna take our seal and seal in the bearing now we're going to uh, Pack this bearing. Once we get this bearing packed, we'll actually stick the uh, the rotor back onto the uh, the knuckle here.
stick a little bit more grease in here too so when we go to stick the washer on it'll uh, pack some more in there then we'll clean up our threads and stick on our uh, our nut Okay, so we put this on snug. So per the manual here, um, we spin this clockwise or counterclockwise in a forward motion and lightly tighten the nut. The nut's gonna get tightened to uh, 17 to 22 inch pounds. And then uh, we back it off a half turn and then go down to, or then torque it to 20 to 25 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. So we aren't using a torque wrench, we're just surely gonna do this by feel. So we're gonna back off a half turn, we're still rotating it, and we're gonna tighten it. So everything sounds nice and smooth. It's rotating freely. We will now take our uh, castle nut deal here and we're gonna stick it over. Um, that first shot looks like it's gonna work. If the, uh, if the prongs here don't line up with the hole here, don't back this off, rotate this and you'll find a spot where they actually line up. And then our uh, cutter key place and then we are going to bend this up because we need to have room for our, our dust cap to go on now we take our dust cap If you want, you can put some RTV around there. Um, this one had it, I've seen other people do that. Um, you don't necessarily have to, but if you want to, this one seems like it seals pretty well, so I don't know if there's a huge need for it. But we may put some on there when we're completely done. So now we can actually get to the brakes. So we're gonna remove our uh, brake pad hardware here. We're gonna clean all this up. We're gonna use a little bit of brake clean. wire brush. And now it's time to put on our brake pads. And we have a inner and an outer shoe. This is the outer, notated by the, uh, the mounting pieces here that will actually go around the caliper. And then the uh, inner is just a smooth backed pad. So keep that in mind, don't get confused. We're now gonna take a little bit of grease here and we're going to put it onto ears of our pad. Do not get grease on the actual braking portion of what contacts the rotor. Keep that directly onto these ears here. So our pad is going to sit. Our rotor is shaped round like that. We are going to put the round end to there and the flatter side will be on the inside. We're literally just going to put this on here like that. You don't need a lot, just enough to keep it lubricated. Sometimes the more grease you put, you tend to think that that's going to be better, but it just attracts dirt and uh, over time can just uh, start actually causing it to hang up. So um, as little as possible just to keep it uh, flowing in there. And then we are going to set them down in here. There we go. 
had to pry up on that just a bit to get it to fall in. No big deal. Grab our uh, second pad here, which is our outer. Same procedure. So these just surely pop out. You can go forwards or backwards, obviously. And we're just gonna take a little bit of caliper grease. We're just gonna put a thin little layer on there, just enough to keep it lubricated. Again, like I said, stick too much of this stuff on there, it just attracts dirt. So we just want enough to keep everything moving freely. We're just gonna shove it back into the boot and you can replace these boots as well too. So if uh, if you have a torn boot or it's looking uh, rotted, then uh, yeah, just get, get a new one and get it in your caliper uh, rebuild kit or a brake hardware kit as well. So pop the top one out. When they're in good shape, they kind of suctioned in there pretty good. So um, as you can see, there was really no dirt or grime on these. Lack of lubrication, so. Good thing we're uh, we're gonna relube them here. Come on, sucker! There we go. They just snap into place. Now you can see they're moving around freely. All right, so we're going to uh, compress the caliper piston. So we're going to take the cap off of the uh, master cylinder. We're just gonna rest it right there. We just want the fluid to be able to come up as we press the piston in. So pull our bungee cord from our caliper here. And we're going to use a C-clamp and our old brake pad to compress this. We're just gonna lay that guy right into there. Open up our C-clamp a little bit more. And we're gonna thread the C-clamp down. You wanna be pretty centered while you're doing this so that everything compresses evenly and just thread the C-clamp down. They do make caliper uh, piston spreaders, um, but this works and pretty much, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you got a C-clamp, so. I've always just used a C-clamp. There we go. Once we have the piston bottomed out, it basically stops. So there's really no question if uh, you have it all the way down, you don't need to try to force it. Once it becomes taut in there, it's all the way down, as you can see. Get some of that debris out of there. Caliper slides directly on. And you can see these holes here. That's where these will end up going into. So you just kind of got to wiggle it on there. go our bottom slide was hanging it up there so if it doesn't want to go on make sure your slides are shoved all the way out so that excess grease off there for my hands and now we can take our uh, bolts here and put them in I always go till they're uh, snug on the top, then I proceed to tighten the bottom. I do this so everything just comes in straight. And once I get the bottom snug, I will go back up to the top and I will tighten the top. Check the top. Okay, 
there we go. Now, if the caliper slightly felt loose, it's because we don't have the piston compressed all the way up against the pads yet. All right, there you guys can now see it. So you can see the tiny gap when we press on the brake, or we'll, when we go to start the vehicle, we're gonna turn on the vehicle, pump up the brake pedal till we feel pressure. Then we start the vehicle and we know for sure we have the uh, piston all the way up against the brakes and we'll have brakes to drive away. So that's it guys. Don't forget to put your uh, master cylinder cap back on as well. But that's as simple as it is to do your uh, wheel bearing. If you even had to replace your wheel bearing, you've seen how to put that in and out. So we covered that. We covered replacing the rotor and we recovered, or we covered replacing the brake pads. Have a great day, you guys. Thank you for watching.